Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to debate number four. And if I can just remind everyone of the motion, it is this House believes that Scotland should continue to lead the way in marine energy technology. And for our fourth debate, we have proposing the motion, All Ness Academy, who are Amandeep Keynes, Kelsey McRae and Rebecca McClement. Sorry. <laughs> and opposing, we have um, Kingusi High School, who are um, Beth Mickle, Paulina Palugaba, and Rory McDonald. So we have um, Allness and uh, Kingusi, and I'd like to open the debate by inviting the first speaker from Allness to talk about the proposition. Good morning, Madam Chair, judges, fellow delegates, and audience and welcome to today's debate. My name is Amandeep Kent, and myself, Ms. Rebecca McClymont, and Ms. Kelsey McRae, are representing Allness Academy today in proposing the motion today, which is, this house believes that Scotland should continue to lead the way in marine energy technology. We strongly agree with this motion and believe Scotland should most certainly stay ahead in marine energy technology for the various, for the various reasons that my colleagues and I will soon state and explain. First of all, I would like to define this motion. By this house, we mean the people in this room. By continuing to lead the way, we mean that Scotland should stay at the number one position in marine energy technology development and deployment. And by marine energy, we mean wave and tidal power. I'll be talking about the excellent natural resources Scotland has, which makes it one of the best places to harness power from marine energy. I will also be discussing the low um, the low carbon footprint and the reliability of these technologies. My colleague, Ms. McClymont, will be expanding upon these points, as well as discussing the investment and job opportunities that continuing to lead the way in marine energy will bring our country. My first <coughs> point to support the argument is that Scotland benefits in many ways by being the leader of marine energy technology. One factor is that Scotland has an excellent environment for wave and tidal power. For example, there is plenty of coastline around Scotland to install the technology. In fact, there is over 6,000 miles of it. It is a clean... Yeah, please. We're talking about our amazing coastlines in Scotland, but these coastlines are home to thousands of different species of animals. Why should our needs go before theirs? Well, there is plenty of, as I was saying, there is plenty of coastline to install the technology, and the companies that develop these technologies um, carry out lots of surveying and careful considerations to make sure that they're not affecting the area that they're installing in. So as I was saying, it, it's a clean and reliable technology and it, does not, and it does not depend on the weather like other renewable sources. It only makes sense to take advantage of our incredible environment. Ladies and gentlemen, did you know the waters around Scotland hold 25% of Europe's total tidal power potential? We know that the technology is under development, but it is rapidly expanding. And according to BBC researchers, very soon, it alone will be able to meet 50% of Scotland's energy needs. <coughs> Engineers from Oxford University and Edinburgh University have identified Scotland as one of the best places for marine energy technology. It has significant renewable energy potential. The area also has exceptional environmental quality. The Pentland Firth is recognised as the best site for tidal energy. Energy from this site has the potential to meet 50% of the country's current electricity demand. Energy from tidal technologies, such as lagoon enclosures, could supply another 12% of our power. Some of the best resources are located off the northwest coast and northern tip of Scotland. The Scottish Government believes that wave and tidal energy make an important contribution towards um, meeting our future demand for electricity. The placement of wave and tidal projects here will not affect tourism in the same way that other energy sources, such as wind turbines or nuclear plants do, which tourists do find ugly. To conclude, we have been provided by nature with the perfect environment for harnessing safe, clean and reliable energy. To not take advantage of this would be illogical. Ms McClymont will be talking about the cleanness of these technologies, as well as investment on job creation. I am confident that you will agree with our viewpoint towards the motion, for the various reasons that I have stated and for those that my colleague, Ms. McClymont, will discuss with you in her speech. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you for listening.
thank you for opening our debate on this. And I'm now going to invite the first opposition speaker to outline their case from King UC. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen, honourable chair, esteemed judges and fellow delegates. My name is Rudy MacDonald and I shall start by introducing our argument. First, I'd like to start with a point of rebuttal for the other team. Mr. Keynes, you said that marine technology holds many benefits for Scotland, but why don't we use our other technologies, which are much more developed, to lead the way in? This would be a much better choice for Scotland. As I was saying, the proposition have already defined the motion, but we are going to explain to you why Scotland should not lead the way in marine energy technology. We are going to convince you that Scotland should be stepping down from leading the way and that we should be investing this money into things that will really benefit Scotland's people. My colleague, Miss Mickel, shall go into depth about our arguments and Miss Palyagova shall summarise our points and close the argument. Marine technology. Well, let's start from the beginning. What is it and how does it work? Well, marine energy is created by the waves of the ocean harvesting the kinetic movements using tidal turbines, tidal barrages and wave power device, devices. The questions we ask are, is it predictable, is it affordable and is it secure? But can we answer these questions fully? No, because this technology is in the early stages of development, meaning, yes please. You asked if it was reliable and if we could really say that we could power Scotland alone on this, but is other renewable energies that rely on the weather really reliable that can catch fire at any second, such as solar. Please bear with me while I confer with my colleagues. Solar energy is actually more beneficial because we're not actually harming the environment very much. Yes, please. We may not be harming the environment, but solar panels do actually cause harm to humans because the silicon used to build these solar panels can actually give humans a serious illness such as silicosis. No, thank you. My colleagues and I strongly feel that this money could be put into a more worthy cause. After the recent cuts in education, we feel this could be put there to improve. Every three years, Countries of the world participate in PISA exams organised by the OECD, the Organisation of Economic Cooperation and Development, to show which countries are leading the way in maths, science and reading. I'm not even going to begin sugarcoating the bad result the UK achieved in last year's exams. We're supposed to be a well-developed country and we failed to gain a place in the top 20. Why is this happening? The answer is so straightforward. We are putting projects in leading the way before the education of our youth. We are saying that leading the way in marine technology is a negative for our country. As a, as a student and future voter, I feel we could develop a child's understanding for renewable energy, something we may be very reliant on in the future, or have better facilities for children to study renewable energy. With this new generation of knowledge, we can ensure that we fully understand this technology before we make the mistake of standing forward and end up drowning in a sea of our bad mistakes. Madam Chair, for these reasons, I beg to oppose this motion. Thank you. Thank you very much, Kim Yussi. And I'm now going to call on the second speaker to make the case for the proposition from Allness. Good morning to everyone in attendance. Chairs, um, Madam Chair, judges, audience, and of course, my fellow delegates. And as you all know, we are for the motion that this House should continue to lead the way in marine energy technology. We are here to prove that we are correct to agree with this motion. My colleague, Mr. Kent, has already discussed with you the fact that we are in the perfect environment to harness the energy from wave and tidal movement. As my colleague, um, but first of all, I would like to take issue with what Mr. MacDonald said about how we should rely more on other renewable energies, such as solar, rather than our marine energy. Yes, they may not cause harm to the environment, but what about the harm they cause to human lives, like, as I said, the silicosis caused by the silicon, and that they can catch fire at any point in time, as example, such as May 14th this year, um, a, solar panels on top of a school 
named Faith Lutheran Middle School and High School caught fire, causing um, about an estimated $60 million in damage. That's equivalent to about £40,000 in damage. As my colleague, Mr. Kainth, has mentioned, marine energy te technology is very clean. The emissions created from the technology are minimal, and it costs much less to install and run than any other renewable power. The technology does not, does not affect the environment. For example, a wave power system simply floats on top of the surface of the water, preventing serious impact upon wildlife. As far as maintenance is concerned, tidal energy does not need to be regularly maintained as the technology is modern and newly built. Therefore, it requires... Yes, please. If the technology is modern and just built, how do you know that it's not going to take a lot to maintain? We haven't had this technology long enough to be sure. Yes, it's in its infancy, but it has been tested before, and as by what's been tested, it has been proven that it doesn't need that much input from humans. And we've already had it for 10 years. Forty, sorry. <laughs> Therefore, it requires little human input once installed. Marine projects cause little damage to land, unlike fossil fuels, such as coal, that cause massive destruction. For example, coal mines leave large holes in result of their extraction. However, wave power does not cause any damage to the earth. It's safe and it's clean. Yes, please. You say that it's safe, but it's actually endangering many species underwater. As um, Mr. Kainth has already said in his, um, his speech, that careful consideration has been put into where these um, technologies are placed to prevent minimal damage to the wildlife, um, sea life, sorry, in, in this. No, thank you. Um, where was it? Creating power from waves creates no harmful byproducts such as carbon dioxide. Through being leader of marine technology, Scotland will become well known on the global map. This, of course, attracts a lot of investment into Scotland's renewable energy sector. At the start of 2014, many major companies, such as EDF Energy, invested millions in the technology. Latest figures released by the UK government shows that over the last two years, Scotland has seen more than £2.3 billion pounds worth of investment in renewables, which supports more than 2,500 jobs. EDF Energy has invested three million in the development of underwater turbines with its strategic partner, Marine Current Turbines. Because of marine energy technology, thousands of jobs are being created across Scotland. Scottish Enterprise, no thank you, has led the development of the National Renewables Infrastructure Plan. This plan aims to help the development of a globally, pardon me, globally competitive marine renewables industry in Scotland through the creation of infrastructure to support large-scale manufacturing, assembly and deployment. We now have the ability and resources to create an industry that delivers significant investment and jobs throughout Scotland, including within some of our most remote communities, such as St Kilda's, where there is great potential for marine renewable projects. Um, yes, please. What about all the jobs that are lost for the fishermen who rely on the coastlines to get money? Yeah, um, as you were saying, there's a lot more jobs created through renewable, the renewables industry. And as we've said, there's 6,000 miles of coastline. Um, I think there would be quite a bit of space for them still co to continue. No, thank you. Um, the in entire industry is forecast by Renewable UK be worth £6 billion by 2035. This will also create around 20,000 jobs. Since the 1980s, unemployment figures in Scotland have risen extremely high, as have the crime rates, drug and alcohol abuse and domestic abuse figures. There is no doubt that these factors are related. When unemployment goes up, sales go down. This is because in most cases, the unemployed simply do not have enough money to buy the things they usually would down at their local shops. This has directly affected many businesses, with thousands becoming bankrupt, sometimes overnight, in the past few years, bringing some areas from 100% employment to 100% unemployment in one day. 
Marine Energy Companies, as of Renewable UK's 2013 end of year report, employ 18,465 people full time, three times the number of people working within the UK's coal industry. Ladies and gentlemen, keep in mind that marine energies are still in their infancy, so these employment figures are set to rise even higher in the next few years. So you've all heard, so ladies and gentlemen, thank you very much for listening. You've all heard my points and Mr. Kent's here, and you will soon hear Kel Ms. Kelsey McRae's. And I hope you will agree that this and all our other points clearly show that marine energy is the way to go for Scotland, not just to benefit our environment, but the Scottish industry as a whole. Thank you very much for listening. Thank you very much, Joel Ness. And I'm now going to call on the second speaker to make the case for the opposition from Kinusi. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen, esteemed judges, honourable chair and fellow delegates. My name is Beth Mickle. My colleague, Mr MacDonald, has already responded to the motion for today's debate. So I'm going to explain to you why Scotland should not continue to lead the way in marine technology. Before I start my speech, I'd like to just say a quick point of rebuttal. You're saying that lots of jobs are created by renewable energy, but you're not taking into account the people who have trained all their lives to work in areas like the fishing industry, the coal and mining industry. These people don't have any other qualifications. They would be left unemployed. Now to my speech. Marine technology has a huge potential. Yes, that may be true, but it is not down to Scotland to lead the way. We simply do not have the financial backing to do so. Scotland is not a very big country, and before we start blowing the small budget we have on fancy new technology that we don't actually know enough about, we need to focus on things that are really necessary. Things like healthcare, education, and the military. As you will all be aware, the referendum this September will determine whether or not we will become an independent country. If we were to go independent, we'd have a lot more pressing issues to deal with rather than leading the way in marine technology. It's just not that important. No, thank you. We will already be spending £13 million on the referendum. Having just come out of recession, the last thing we want to do is go back. More financially stable times are ahead of us if we can just be sensible about these things and not blow all our money on unnecessary things. With things like the massive £15 million cut to our education budget and plans for a £226.7 million cut to our NHS, how do you expect us to find the money to continue to lead the way in such trivial areas as marine technology? Yes, please. There's lots of investment from major firms for our marine energy technology, such as EDF Energy. That may be true, but we're still going to need massive investment from the Scottish Government. And if we want to continue to lead the way, we're going to need even more investment and more money, and we just don't have it. No, thank you. Renewable energy is by all means a good thing. But in comparison to other types of sustainable energy, marine energy is not in its prime. Currently, marine power systems are not as well developed or practical as other, marine energy, as other renewable energy sources. If we were to invest in renewable energy, surely we should pick a type which is cost-effective, practical and advanced. I hate to break it to you, but marine energy is none of the above. To have Scotland leading the way in marine technology may sound like a nice idea, but in reality it is a waste of money which could be spent on more worthy causes. We are just too busy to continue to lead the way in this field. We have done our bit and it's now time to pass the baton on to another country. How would you feel if you were a fish, just going about your fishy day when suddenly a giant turbine gets in the way? The fans will suck you in and bam, sushi for two. Yes, please? Um, but fish wouldn't be as stupid as that to go into a current that they're not familiar with. They would rather just stay in their part instead of swimming towards a turbine current. Um, our fish come back to the same place to breed every single year. If we install more marine harvesting facilities, they're not going to know. Nobody's going to tell them. They will come back and find these turbines in their breeding areas and they will get sucked in. No, thank you. It is not fair on our marine wildlife for these harvesting facilities, no thank you, to be put in place. We've already done enough damage to our marine life. 
If we were to continue to lead the way in marine technology, it would mean installing a lot more marine harvesting facilities. Have we not done enough damage already? Do we not owe our planet a new, safe type of renewable energy? No, thank you. No, thank you. Marine energy is not actually as clean as it seems to be. To have the facilities out in the first place will take lots of boats to bring the parts. What powers these boats? Fossil fuels. To have the facilities regularly manned will take boats and cars to bring them in. What powers these methods of transport? Fossil fuels. And to have all the parts made in the factories, what will power the machinery? You guessed it, fossil fuels again. Installing more of these marine harvesting facilities will mean burning more fossil fuels and doing more damage to our environment. The proposition may say this is a short-term loss for a long-term gain. Both marine facilities not actually advanced or even commercially viable. We're losing a lot and only gaining a little. Leading the way is really not in Scotland's best interest. We should let other countries take the leading role and make the mistakes. We should watch and learn from these mistakes. Mistakes are good. You can improve them from them. But when these mistakes could lose us billions of pounds, we do not want to be the ones making them. Letting bigger countries with bigger budgets and less to lose make the mistakes before us, we can make sure that in the future, we will not be making them. Scotland relies on its beautiful coastlines for jobs and money. New marine power stations could have disastrous effects on coastal towns and villages. People visit these coastal areas and generate jobs and income. Who's going to want to visit Scotland to see the majestic looking power stations and breathtaking machinery? No, thank you. I'll nest. For a village near the coast, I am shocked and ashamed that you could support such a motion. Not only will marine technology affect tourism, but it will affect the fishing industry as well. The noise pollution from these facilities will scare away the fish on which people rely for their income. This could prove to be catastrophic for coastal towns and villages. But hey, what does it matter? No, thank you. The government will look eco-friendly, so destroying marine life, tourism and fishing industries really doesn't matter. And of course, causing mass unemployment doesn't matter either. Oh no, the proposition don't care. They're just trying to make themselves look good and are not taking into consideration the lives of the Scottish people. If you care about your country, and you care about your environment, and you care about the Scottish people, I beg you to oppose this motion. Thank you. Thank you very much indeed, uh, King Yussi. And we're now moving on to the uh, summations. So I'm going to call on the third proposition speaker to sum up the case for all this. Good morning, or nearly afternoon, to everyone in the room. Honourable Chair, audience, judges, and of course my fellow delegates. I am Cassie McRae, third speaker of the opposing team. The statement up for debate today is this House believes Scotland should continue to lead the way in marine energy technology. My colleagues, Ms McClymont, Mr Kainth and I, believe this statement to be true. As third speaker, it's my job to rebut what the other team has said. And when thinking about what they have said, some words spring to mind. I would agree with you, but then we'd both be wrong. The first speaker of the affirmative team, eh, sorry, of the negative team, has tried to tell us that um, there's better alternatives, such as solar panels. Solar panels are not a better alternative at all, as they can cause illnesses such as silicosis and can catch fire any minute because they're not turned off. There's other alternatives, of course, that he may have discussed, such as wind turbines, but they release lots of oil waste and destroy our countryside. The, sec the second speaker of the team opposing the motion talked a lot about the investment needed to, to be put into the marine energy technology. We accept that this is a valid point, but we have had investment from major firms and EDF Energy is only one of the examples. Also, the Scottish Government have put millions of pounds aside for marine energy technology. She also spoke about the independence vote and how we will need our money if we do indeed go independent. But there's no stats to prove that the majority vote is for independence. So therefore, that is a relative factor in this argument. She spoke about the sea life affected by marine energy technology. 
but there's nets and ladders and lots of careful consideration and planning to protect them from the wind turbines. And the jobs, as for the jobs lost, we have over 6,000 miles of coastline, which is something the opposition have failed to <coughs> recognise. There's enough room for fishing and our new clean source of energy. And as for tourism, this has put Scotland on the global map. That, this means it will attract tourists from bigger countries after seeing this. Surely the more we expand on marine energy technology, the more we will get in the, in the, ha, in the <coughs> tourist um, industry. I'd like to apologise in advance for ever the th whatever the third speaker tries to say or bring to this argument. The arguments made by the opposition have been what we feel pointless. My first speaker, Mr Amadeep Kane, spoke to you about how marine energy technology is the best and most way clean way to power Scotland. He made points both about the excellent natural resources we have here in Scotland and how they are reliable and produce a low carbon footprint. As for the ne excellent natural resources, as has already been mentioned, we have over 6,000 miles of coastline, and I cannot stress this enough. And as for the low carbon footprint, marine energy technology only releases CO2 in the transportation. Workers don't have to travel to it to maintain it because it can run by itself. The only thing that needs human impact, input is the is the installation of it. My second speaker, Ms. Rebecca McClymont, informed you that marine energy technology has put our wee country on the global map, attracting investment from major firms such as EDF Energy. She also spoke to you about the jobs renewable energy can bring in. Marine energy companies, as of Renewable UK's 2013 end of year report, employ 18,465 people. <coughs> Madam Chair, members of the audience, and of course, the judges, our team strongly, are strongly convinced this statement is true and hope you haven't been swayed towards the lies of the opposition. very much indeed, Olness. And now finally, to uh, close the debate, I'm going to call on the third opposition speaker to sum up and close the debate from King UC. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen, esteemed judges, honourable chair and fellow delegates. My name is Polina Payugova. My colleagues, Mr Macdonald and Miss Mickle, have already explained why it isn't in Scotland's best interest to lead the way in marine technology. And I will continue to argue that this should be the case. Before I begin, I would like to start with a few points of rebuttal. Your first speaker has said that marine energy is better because it doesn't rely on weather. Solar power can work without the sun using diffusive solar radiation, and this disease is extremely rare. You also say that nets will protect our ocean species when nets are actually a big hazard to them and cause harm to the ocean life that get trapped inside. You also say our arguments are pointless, but what is pointless is leading the way when we don't actually have to. You also say that the government has put money aside when they could be using this money for education, things that are actually necessary for the Scottish people. As I was saying, Scotland is a country that stands proud for its natural beauty, and so it should, because we have so much to be proud of. One of our most iconic sites is our beautiful coastlines, how can we preserve this beauty when the government plans to clutter it with marine technology? For one thing, marine technology is a number one harm to our ocean wildlife, as well as the starting point of a negative food chain. Allow me to explain. The fish will be harmed by the blades. Chopped up, gone, bye bye. Fishermen rely on fish to run their businesses, which will suffer majorly if nothing is caught. Tourists from all over the world travel to visit Scotland's coastlines. Who will want to see a cluttered, lifeless landscape? I certainly would not make the effort for that journey. As you can see, leading the way 
in marine technology is the start of our spiraling way down a set of stairs that spell disaster. The proposition are rattling on about saving the world, when in fact, they're doing quite the opposite. Alness, I know my home is important to me. Surely your home is important to you too, especially where you live, a beautiful coastline. I'm surprised you're willing to sacrifice the beauty of your home for such an unworthy option. Scotland is certainly not in the position to blow its finances on projects from which we will gain so little. Let's invest our money on a more worthy cause, a renewable energy type with more potential. How about hydroenergy, which Scotland has been studying and developing for some time, or wind power, which is successful up and running? We should concentrate on what we have and make the most of it before we start on something new. Speaking of using our budget wisely, there are more important issues we need to focus on, things that are actually necessary. Scotland is an economically developed country, living in the advanced 21st century, and yet one in seven families live in poverty. Scottish education is also falling behind, as Mr Macdonald has explained. How can we expect a good future when we're so poorly preparing our youth for life ahead? It's time to face our problems before things go worse. It's time we learned how to stand on our own two feet. It's the people of our country that matter most. You must agree that Scotland's people deserve a standard life and an education that will prepare individuals such as me for the real world. The future is to be put in our hands. It may as well be ones we can trust and depend on. Renewable energy is the door that opens towards a brighter and better future. But to open that door, we need a key. The key to open that door is a successful and skilled generation which we need to build. Marine technology should not be the centre of our attention. Like Ms Mickel has said, it's time to hand the baton to another country. One wrong turn and it could be millions of pounds down the drain. Let's not be labelled, let's not be the country labelled for making that big mistake. I hope my colleagues and I have been able to convince you that leading the way in marine technology is not the way forward. Being the intelligent people you are, you must agree that to think otherwise is utterly ridiculous. We need to show the world we are worthy of making the right decisions. This is the right decision. It is for these reasons I beg you to oppose this motion. Thank you. Thank you very much to King Yussi and uh, the debate has now closed. Um, thank you to both King Yussi and Olness for um, certainly giving it everything on our last debate. Nothing was left unsaid. So um, we're now going to take a, a break for lunch, which is going to be served in the area just outside the room here, whilst the judges, the poor judges, are going to have to deliberate and come to some decisions because all eight of you, I think, have been absolutely fantastic. The standard is just so high. And they have the very difficult job of deciding which four teams are going to go through to our semi-finals and our afternoon debates. And they will be making that announcement in around 30 minutes' time. And then the, the teams will have some time to prepare. Uh, but we have now a half-hour break. And then we'll convene in here for, for that announcement. So thank you, all of you, for the debates this morning. Thank you very much indeed, everyone who took part.